Offensively, it was a great win. Gronk had nine catches, uh, 105 yards and a touchdown. It was a beatdown. So here's the question, Stephen A. Smith. Were you surprised by the way the Patriots beat the Broncos? I was relatively surprised. I mean, when you consider all the noise that has been made about the Denver Broncos, myself and others, despite the fact that both Skip and I have New England coming out of the AFC, uh, you know, in this particular game, I expected Denver to really, really show its mettle, uh, to show its improvement, the fact that, you know, they had had some new able bodies, and on the offensive side of the ball, they've been nothing but a juggernaut with Peyton Manning, with Emmanuel Sanders, with the Thomases, the De De uh, Demarius and Julius, uh, with the Wes Welker, with Ronnie Hillman running the ball so effectively that it's rendered Monty Ball pretty much a moot point right now. Uh, you just looked at their offense and, and you just suspected that they were going to be able to put up some points, not c what they're customarily uh, used to doing, uh, but nevertheless that they would put up some points along the lines of 30 or so. Uh, but what I didn't expect, despite the fact that everybody's making so much noise, Skip, uh, about Peyton Manning, I'm putting this on the Denver Broncos defense. I'm putting this on Jack Del Rio, the defensive coordinator. I'm putting this on the coach, John Fox, whose signature, uh, the reason, the very reason he's become a head coach in the NFL was because of his reputation as a defensive Defensive mind. Uh, you got to anticipate that Peyton Manning's going to have some trouble. He's now 2 and 8 in Foxborough. You're going up against Bill, Bel Bill Belichick, somebody who's incredibly familiar with him, knows what he likes to do, knows how he, he operates, and, and, and game plans accordingly. So, whatever Peyton Manning customarily is, you know it's going to be a problem when you're going up against Bill Belichick. But what excuse does the defense have? You could say Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, and I'll go with that based on their performance. 353 yards passing, 105 yards receiving, uh, a sensational effort by Rob Gronkowski, who obviously elevates uh, the in New England Patriots to another stratosphere. But in the end, I'm looking at this defense. Where the hell were you? DeMarcus Ware, Vaughn Miller. T.J. Ward, Akeem Tlaib, I mean, my Lord, you were the primary cornerback for the New England Patriots just last year. You couldn't prepare these guys for what was going to come their way. You couldn't give some kind of inkling uh, to, to help them out to be better prepared for Peyton Manning. Uh, for this defense to get shredded the way that it got shredded, to get picked apart the way that it got picked apart, was incredibly disappointing. And I don't think it's more than a mere coincidence, the fact that the, the 43 points that they gave up in the Super Bowl was matched by the 43 points they gave up yesterday. As far as I'm concerned, it was an abysmal performance uh, by the defense of the Denver Broncos. It set the tone for everything that followed, and I was incredibly disappointed to see what I saw, period. Period? Uh, what I saw was that defense that you're trying to, uh, to rip. I thought it just got exposed for what it was up to this point. I thought it was a little overrated. Okay. I thought it was playing over its head. And it ran into a quarterback who, since that debacle that New England played at Kansas City a mere five weeks ago, 41-14, to 14, the quarterback I speak of, Tom Brady, has thrown 18 touchdown passes to one interception. That's what that Denver defense ran into yesterday in Foxborough. And, Stephen A., doesn't it seem like five years ago now that I kept hearing, we kept hearing that <coughs> Tom Brady after the debacle in Kansas City was washed up and that Bill Belichick had sabotaged him by not giving him enough weapons. That's the team that we saw yesterday. Are you kidding me? What I saw yesterday was the best team in the National Football League. I saw after all the build up to this game, when, when everybody widely proclaimed Denver the best team in the National Football League, I saw Denver ultimately get outclassed by New England. And I saw a, a New England team hold the great Peyton Manning to 3 of 11 on third down and 0 for 4 on fourth down. So on all the key downs of this game, the great Peyton Manning went 3 for 15. Are you kidding me? And that is why the great Peyton Manning, for the first time I can remember in his career, said after the game that he stunk. And he did stink. I'm with him. And I appreciate the fact that Peyton acknowledged that. But I think that the New England defense that you didn't give any credit to did not stink. I think it's a brand new day. This is the new New England defense. 
The, this is Darrell Rivas and Brandon Browner on the corners. And what did you call the, the four receivers of the Denver Broncos? What were you the calling? The four horsemen. The four, the four horsemen. horsemen. The four horsemen. I, I thought yesterday the four horsemen looked like they were riding mules because all of a sudden, Rivas and Browner were getting physical with them at the line of scrimmage and taking them off and out of plays. And what happened to Julius Thomas? Two targets and only two catches? Really? Well, I think Brandon Browner had a lot to do with that. I, I think the New England linebackers, remember, New England was without their best pass well, rusher in Chandler Jones. They just they got after the Broncos in similar ways that Seattle did in the Super Bowl in just getting physical, attacking the football. I, I thought they had Peyton on his heels the whole game on all the key downs. Well, we're looking at it a tad bit differently. Number one, keep in mind, we both picked New England to come out of the AFC, so none of us were sitting here talking about how Tom Brady was done, and none of us were sitting here talking about as if uh, New England's defense would never uh, resurrect itself, not with Bill Belichick at the helm. We didn't say that, so let's, let's pump the brakes on that point. The other point that I'd like to make is this. It was sort of a replica of the Super Bowl because of the physicality of the New England Patriots and how it appeared to impose its will on the Denver Broncos. Now, the difference is, is that you're talking about neutral territory, even though MetLife Stadium for the Super Bowl was incredibly loud in favor of, of Seattle, uh, by and large, as far as I remember. Uh, but yesterday, you're in Foxborough. Listen, I'm going to give Denver's offense to some degree. I know they got held to seven points in the first half or what have you, but you're in hostile confines. It's inclement weather. It's not ideal circumstances. The crowd is rabid. It's raucous. It's hyped. It's ready to go. We had been talking about this big-time matchup between Peyton and Tom Brady, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's one of those situations where you're going to anticipate that the, that the offense is going to struggle to some degree anyway, at least at least initially, before they get their bearings under them and, and start flowing a little bit. The problem is they never had an opportunity to because Tom Brady was slicing uh, Denver Broncos defense apart. And that's where I was disappointed. You've got all of these guys. They're the number one Russian defense. Talk about the Denver Broncos, even though they were like 20 or 21st against the pass. And I'm looking at them and I'm saying, you know what? Get to Tom Brady or, or find a way to kind of neutralize these guys. I know Rob Gronkowski is big time, but you got to find a way because you know that's a primary target uh, for Tom Brady. To see this defense get shredded time after time after time again, there were times and points where, okay, yeah, we're not moving the football effectively enough. We're not scoring, but you know something? We, we'll get it going eventually, and then boom, New England would hit you because the defense – couldn't do anything. And then to give up the 84-yard punt return to Julian Edelman, I mean, I, I mean, it was lights out from that point on. So I was incredibly disappointed because, once again, what we saw from the Denver Broncos is something that we thought was over with and we didn't want to see, and that is when this team gets punched in the mouth, we don't want them to get punked. We want them to step up and fight like they did in the second half against Seattle earlier this season. That was not the case last night, and I, I, I fear that it's an omen of things to come. Well, just for the record, I did pick New England to win this game. You picked Denver to win this game. And yeah, yet... And lose in the playoffs. Okay. And yeah. yet, I, I thought that the Patriots would have a fairly easy time scoring because I had them scoring 32, and they got the punt return, which got them up closer to 43. But, again, I didn't think they could own Peyton Manning the way they own Peyton Manning. I thought Belichick was masterful. I thought the game plan of sending linebackers either up the gut or dropping them off the flanks into pass coverage the way they did Ninkovich, which I thought was the, the turning point of the game that, that sort of keyed the onslaught of 24 straight unanswered second quarter points. Think about that. 24 straight unanswered second quarter points. And Stephen A., you, you got to give it up to Tom Brady is playing right now at a higher level than Peyton Manning is playing at. And Rob Gronkowski is not just the best tight end in football. He's the most dominating receiver in all of football. And all of a sudden, mm. when, when you say uh, he's the most dominant, I'm not saying he's the best. I'm just saying when it comes to domination, when it comes to making plays that you just can't defend on some key third down, I don't think there's a force like him in the league right now. I'm, 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 wa I'm watching that miniature dude in Pittsburgh named Antonio and Brown right now. And I always right call now, him the best Skip, wide receiver. I don't know receiver. about that. Yeah, he's right. the best wide receiver. Right. But let me tell you, Gronkowski, he, he, you want to talk about beast? He's beyond Marshawn Lynch. When, when Gronkowski beast modes, 
He, he's the biggest, baddest beast mode there is in pro football right now. And all of a sudden, when you didn't think Brand, uh, that, that Tom Brady had weapons, Julian Edelman is better than Wes Welker. He's faster, he's quicker, and he's just as tough as Wes used to be pre-concussions. I know Wes got knocked out of the game with a shot to the back. I know he's having some head issues. But listen, I'll take Edelman over Wes Welker any day. I, I think Brandon LaFell, he's turned into Brady's favorite target now. He's 6'3", 210. He had 13 targets, a, a Patriot high yesterday. So that offense, it, it's pretty awesome. It's right there with Peyton's, if not a... a Cut above just because well, of Gronkowski. Because I'll take Gronkowski over any of the four Denver receivers. Yeah, but who wouldn't, Skip? The question about Rob Gronkowski wasn't his skill and what he brings to the table. The question is, is that how soon is he going to look 100%? Because his health is obviously a question mark because now. of those nasty knee injuries. But obviously he's looking at that. He's looking like that right now. But there's no question about his skill set. It's just a matter of whether or not he's healthy. And when Rob Gronkowski is out there, he changes the whole dynamic of the game because he's obviously uh, uh, t Tom Brady's favorite target. We didn't expect as much from LaFell as we're getting right now, but I think that speaks more to now more so than ever before the difference between Tom Brady in New England and Cam Newton in North Carolina um, in, in Carolina so you look at all of those things and there's no question that the offense is lethal and, and, and we believe that but I still expected more from Denver's defense. DeMarcus where T.J. Ward, Aqib Tlaib with a healthy Von Miller added to that defense. You were supposed to be a bunch of rough riders ready to handle your business in this particular situation, not to hold New England down because you weren't going to do that. But, my God, did you have to give up 43 points? Or if you want to take away the punt return, 37 points? Couldn't you have held them to 27 or something? Did they have to look like they could move the ball uh, where Tom Brady could pick up the cell phone and call Giselle and tell them, what he wants for dinner and the whole bit. You could go home, leave the stadium early. I'll catch you when I get home. We got this. I mean, did, did it have to look that easy? That's all I'm saying. That's my problem with it. With the win last night, uh, the Patriots now have won 34 straight home games versus AFC teams. Let's go to the other side of the ball and talk about that.